Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our first virtual town hall meeting for the year 2021. If you're like me, you're glad to start anew in another new year. Well, my name is Clarina Tolson, and I'm the Deputy Executive Director for the Delphi Parking Authority. It is our pleasure to be here this evening to talk about something that we think is really very, very important. We have a great team that works at the Parking Authority. We have an Executive Director, Scott Petrie. Sue Cornell, who's going to be our speaker this evening, is our Director of Senior Director of Public Engagement. And we have a team behind the scenes that handles all of our social media and otherwise communication uh, efforts. And that's Janelle King and Bill Wasser. But as I said, I think that this is going to be a great discussion this evening. And the topic is called a fresh start. The fresh start means, you know, what do we want to do new in 2021? So many of us have had challenges over the past year. And one of the things that may be hanging over some of our heads is open tickets, tickets for which we owe a fee and we have not paid them as yet. So some of us are very concerned about those tickets. We're concerned about, you know, might my car be booted? Might my car be towed because of my unpaid ticket? Well, we wanna to talk tonight in a way that we can help you kind of relieve yourself of all that stress and anxiety and start fresh. A new opportunity, a new day, clear the slate and move forward. So with that said, I wanna to turn to Sue Cornell who is very much concerned about making sure that we provide as much service as we can to all those who have to be involved with the Parking Authority. So with that said, I wanna to turn to Sue and ask her to introduce herself and uh, get our program started for the evening. Thank you, Ms. Tolson. <clears throat> Again, my name is Sue Cornell and I am the Senior Director for Public Engagement for the Philadelphia Parking Authority. So thank you everyone for being here with us tonight. We really appreciate you spending your time with us. And as you may notice, we're not in our offices today. We've been working through home, um, from home. So welcome, <clears throat> excuse me. And as Ms. Tol Tolson mentioned, the beginning of a new year is a time when a lot of people think about the past year or past years, and they think about the new year coming up and what they might want to change. And we completely recognize that this has been a very difficult year for a lot of people. I don't think there's anyone who hasn't been affected, whether it's emotionally, physically, or financially. Um, so when we created our calendar for the year, for our monthly engagement, we actually did have a different topic <clears throat> scheduled for tonight, but we decided that it would be most helpful if we really took a deep dive into the topic of payment plans. With all the things people have to worry about now on a daily basis, we don't want the constant fear of getting booted or towed to be on that list. We want you to know that they're all, there are alternatives. And we've tried to make it as convenient as possible to give you some peace of mind. So just a few quick things before we get started. If you have any questions, feel free to use the question box on your go-to webinar, and we'll do our best to answer those questions. And if there's anything on the screen, <clears throat> excuse me, that might look a little too small, you can always use your own enlarge button to make the view of your screen bigger. So having said all that, let's start. So I wanna start out tonight with what I'm calling real talk. And what do I mean by this? I mean, let's keep it real. Tickets happen. If you live, work, visit, anytime you're driving in the city, there's a chance that you may have gotten a ticket at some point. I'll tell you that I've gotten tickets. Ms. Tolson, I don't know about you. You may have never gotten any, but I know for myself, I have gotten tickets. Sometimes I think, oh, I'm gonna be real quick. I know maybe I shouldn't park here, but I'll just take my chances. And of course, I'm not recommending that, but it does happen. I do have an example that I will share with you, I have a time that I was towed by a private contractor living in South Philly, if you're familiar with it at all. Streets are small, there's a lot of cars. Um, there is a business garage on this small street near where I live that has clearly marked signs saying, if you park in front of the garage, you'll be towed. 
but I did so one night. It was winter, it was raining, I was cold. I didn't wanna walk for blocks. So I parked in front of the garage and I woke up the next morning, car was gone. And I had to find out who the private contractor was that towed it, had to find out how, figure out a way to get to go pick up my car, pay a pretty decent sum to get my car. And um, overall, it was not a great experience. So the whole point of that is we know it happens. It does happen. The second part of the real talk is to tell you that if you do get a ticket, do your best to take care of it right away. Nothing good happens when you ignore a ticket, whether it's a parking ticket, a speed camera ticket, or a red light camera violation or ticket. They all have penalties that are added if you don't pay them on time or make an effort to dispute them. And if you get more than three of any of those tickets and they're not dealt with by meaning that by that I mean pay, paying it or disputing it, your car could be at risk for getting booted or impounded. And that's really important to note. But even more important to note is that that can be avoided. So instructions how to pay are always on the ticket that you receive. You can always reach out to us on our website. I did that really fast. Hold on, at our website, or you can reach out to us on our social media platforms, or you can call this number, which is our parking violations branch, which is 1-888-591-3636. So back to thinking about a new year and a fresh start. We all know you can't change the past, but we can all help determine what happens in our future. So if you're in a position where you have unpaid tickets and you worry about your car being booted or towed, there's still hope. So why enroll in a payment plan? Number one, if you owe a lot of money and you can't afford to pay it all at once, you don't have to. You can pay over time, over a year or even up to 18 months. Next, your vehicle will be safe, safe from us from being booted or towed. You don't want that to happen because that will end up being more costly and timely to take care of. And all of that leads to peace of mind. And I think we all could use some of that. There is no minimum level of income needed to apply for a payment plan. All income levels qualify. The balance that you owe on any tickets has to be at least $115. That could be a more than one ticket. It could be three tickets that equal $120. It could be one ticket that equals $100 plus a penalty, and then it already is up to $120. That includes parking tickets, red light camera violations or tickets, and speed camera tickets. All of those can be enrolled into a payment plan. So it's pretty simple. There's three ways to enroll in a payment plan. If your car isn't booted or towed, you can apply through the mail or online. If your car is booted or towed, you have to go in person. And again, I can't stress this enough. It's always best to get on a payment plan before that happens to save time and money. To enroll by mail, you call the parking violations branch. They're open from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's helpful to have as much information as you can when you call. Definitely your license plate is a good way to start and just be aware of any previous addresses that you may have had. You'll talk to a customer service representative and they'll go over all the information with you, how many um, tickets you may have that are outstanding, what that amount is, and they will mail out an application to you. Once you finish that call, here's the great thing. Any outstanding tickets that you discuss and that they are going to be put on that payment plan, they will be placed on hold for 10 days. And that means that you won't accrue any additional penalties and your car will be protected from being booted or towed. And those 10 days will give you time to receive the application in the mail and then send it back filled out with your all of your correct information and a down payment. 
So this is what the letter will look like when it comes. Please, please, please take your time and read it through carefully before filling it out, signing and returning. You don't wanna run the risk of going through those 10 days, sending it out and it's incorrect, and then you are at risk for being booted or towed if you have more than three tickets. So how do you figure out what the down payment should be? Here's where you should start. As you can see, you have three different options. You can pick your down payment to be either 15% or 25%, and then you can pick the term. So you can choose between 12 months or 18 months. So what you wanna do is look at the bottom here to see what your total amount due is. And this will come already printed based upon the conversation that you had with the customer service representative. So as you can see on the screen, it has ticket numbers that I just made up um, and it'll show you the amount due that you owe. So I'll lay out the three options so you can compare how different down payments and different lengths of time will affect your numbers. So first we're gonna look at 15% down and a 12 month plan. And the total balance that we're going to look at is $500. So if you take that $500 and you multiply it by 15%, you get $75. This is going to be the amount of your down payment. Next, you're gonna take the original balance, which is the $500. Can I actually stop just for one second? Sure. Yeah. We have, you know, we're taking our questions um, uh, through the question screen. And uh, one of our uh, writers says that they can't see our screen. So let's just give us a second. Just can oh, you just, sure. We just, let's do a, a quick check. <clears throat> Can somebody else who is a, an attendee please tell us whether or not you can see the screen just by writing in the question section, please? That would help us out. If you can see the screen, just write yes. If you can't see the screen, would you just write no? We'll get our top-notch technicians on it. That's right. If one of our attendees, if you could just, yes, they can see it. Okay, we're getting yeses. Okay. Okay, so I, I maybe, somebody, maybe the adjustment has been made, so thank you very much. Thank you, Sue, I'm sorry about that. Go right ahead. Nope. No problem at all. It's good for me to take my time when I'm talking about math anyway. So we're taking <laughs> our original amount, which is the $500, and we're subtracting the down payment, which is 75. And you get 425. Now that is the amount that you're gonna have to pay over time. So this plan would be for 12 months, which means you take 425 and you divide that by 12. And that comes out to $35.42, which means every month your monthly payment would be $35.42. So following that same procedure, but with a little bit different numbers, you can see that the second option here is 25% down payment, which would equal $125. And then your monthly payment for 12 months would be $31.25 each month. And then the last option shows same thing, which is the down payment 25% for $125. The remainder is 375, but this time it's divided by 18 months. So the monthly payment would be $20.83. So you can see you do have some options if you have maybe less to put down for a down payment, you can go with the 15% down and pay a little bit more every month. But if you can pay some more up front, then that's gonna lower your monthly payment. And of course, the third option with the longest plan, it's even gonna lower even more. So I would recommend to you to take that amount due that you would see on the bottom of your letter and go through these three options to see what works best for you. Before you go forward, this is really great, Sue. If you can stay on that screen. Sure. So what we want our, our viewers to note, is, is, which is the really important point that you're trying to raise, think about your own situation. You want to put more down or less down? 
You want to extend it for more months, a longer time to pay off, more time to remember that you need to pay, or do you want to pay off as soon as possible? And uh, so I would ask the question, Sue, uh, what if you want to pay extra towards your payment? Let's say I chose um, the 25% down over 12 months, so I need to pay $31.25 a month. But what if one month I have a little extra money and I want to pay $50? Can I do that? Absolutely. That's a good question. Um, you can absolutely pay more one month. I think the important thing to remember with that is if your regular payment is $31.25 a month and you decide you choose to pay $50 one month, it's important <laughs> to remember that the next month your payment isn't going to be lower. That's going to show up at the end of your plan. So the next month you're still going to pay $31.25 or more, but at least the 3125. So that may shorten, depending on how much you overpay a month or two, it may shorten the time that you're paying, but you're always going to have to pay at least that minimum of the 3125 per month. Does that right. make sense? Right. So what it does is it, it will shorten the time period that you have to pay. So you may take off a month or two at the end. Right. Um, Right. And the other thing that I think is important to note is that this payment plan also does not have a finance charge, right? So it's not like a credit card where you owe money and then you're paying, you know, 15 or 18 percent um, a month on those fees. Is that right? Completely true. Yes. And it is whatever you owe, that's the amount you're paying over time. There's nothing, there's no um, finance charge, there's no extra fees, there's nothing like that. It doesn't cost anything to set up. You're just taking the amount that you, that you owe and spreading that out over time. Great, wonderful. Okay, so back to filling out the paperwork. So let's say you picked the first option, which is 15% for 12 months. So reading through this, if you start at the top and where it says, as per our agreement, a down payment of, and then there's a blank space, you would fill in $75 in that first space. Now the next sentence has to do with the date by which you're agreeing to make that payment. This is a date that you pick. So if you have regular pay dates and you know you want to work with them, you can pick whatever date you want. If you know you typically have a lot of bills that you have to pay in the beginning of the month and you want to make this later in the month, you can do that. The only exception to that is it cannot be the 29th, the 30th, or the 31st of the month. And we like to say you can thank February for that. So obviously with the shorter days in the month, you can only pick one through 28 as your date. So I'm just picking the 15th, just so you can see where that would go in the line. And then the next space to fill out is the monthly amount that you are agreeing to pay. In this case, it would be $35, did that come up? Yes, and 42 cents. Now, next you're gonna click the option that you are picking. Like I said, we picked 15% down for 12 months. And then you wanna make sure <clears throat> you print your name, sign and date form. And when you're filling out your phone number, that's gonna be actually on the next page. Hold on one second. I'm sorry, it is on this page. When you're filling out your phone number and email, make sure you print them very clearly because we might need to contact you if we have any questions. So we need to be able to have a good number to reach you and a clear email to reach you. Now the second page of the application has some really important information on it. So please take your time to read through it carefully. Some of the things that I'd like to highlight are, number one, all of the open tickets that you have, unless any that are scheduled for a hearing, they have to be enrolled. So you can't say, oh, I just want to pick, I have 10 unpaid tickets and I only want to enroll five of them. They have to all be enrolled. And once you enroll those tickets into a payment plan, you can't try to dispute or contest any of them after they are enrolled. 
So like I said, it is important to read through this whole page before you print your name and sign and date it at the bottom. And one last thing, <clears throat> which is so important that I'm giving it its own screen um, to highlight it, and that is make your monthly payments. If you don't, you're putting your vehicle at risk for booting or impoundment. Again, if you have more than three tickets. And again, you save time and money by keeping your plan active until it is all paid off. So you might want to contact your bank to see if they can help set up automatic monthly payments so you don't have to remember each month. They'll take care of it. You will give them the information and they will actually send a check. If that's not an option, you can set up a reminder on your phone or a calendar, whether it's an online calendar or it's a paper calendar. Just make a little notation that you have to send this payment in so you don't forget. For the last step of the mail-in process, after you fill out the application, you can write out a check or money order made out to the city of Philadelphia. Please do not send cash and mail it to this address. And another little tip, I would just recommend that if you can make a copy of both sides of the letter, if you're able, if you can't, you know, I don't know, a lot of people have copiers in their house. So if you can't do that, or if you can't scan it, you could just take a picture of it with your phone. So at least you have a copy. And remember again, to fill it out and send it back quickly. So your car is protected. That's a really great tip to encourage people to take a photograph of their checks with, for their payments. It's always nice to have a record of your payment of tickets um, so that you, if there's ever a need to dispute a payment or to um, just have a record of a document, you have it very handy. So taking a picture with your cell phone is a great tip. Absolutely. We have a bunch of questions with regard to uh, <clears throat> online payments. So I'm glad that you're getting to this category because a lot of people want to know how do you make online payments? And they want to know about the fees and things like that. So great. I'm glad we're getting to this one. We're definitely going to cover that. So that's good. So we're going to talk about enrolling first online. First step is go to our website, www.phillapark.org. It's P H I L A P A R K dot org. And on the home screen, you will see an icon for payment plans. You just click right there. You'll be brought to a page with more options. You wanna click under the icon that says enroll in monthly payment plan. And before you begin, there's a terms of use agreement. This is what it looks like as a whole. I just kind of did a little bit closer so you can just see what you would be seeing on your computer there. Again, read it through carefully. Then at the bottom, right there, you're going to click on that box that say you agree with the agreement and you're going to click continue to continue. Now the next page has a drop down box for you to choose how you want to look up your information. You can choose by license plate or ticket number. And if you look at the screen, the first item is ticket number, then license plate, the next choice is notice number, and then payment plan number. Once you are actually enrolled and have a payment plan number, you can also use the same page to make your monthly payments. I chose to look up an account by license plate. So you can see that I typed in ANC1234 and under state, I picked Pennsylvania. Then you click on the button to search. Any unpaid <clears throat> tickets that you have would show up here. You can see the total amount due where that arrow is. And down here, very small, which we are working on getting fixed, you can see click here to request a payment plan. So like I mentioned, it is small, but it's there and you click on that to request a payment plan. 
What pops up the next time is terms and conditions, similar to what we saw earlier that was on the second page of the mail-in application. Again, read through it carefully, and I would recommend taking a screenshot so you have it for your records. At the bottom of the page, click Continue. The next page is the top portion of the screen, what you're gonna see on your screen. So remember to make sure all of your information is correct. Make sure you enter a valid working phone number that you answer all the time because that is how you're going to be contacted to finish the process. And again, make sure you type in your email and confirm it and that's all correct. You also do have, the only thing you have to upload is a copy of your valid government issued ID. So you do this by clicking on select files to upload, and this will take you to your own computer files. So before you get here, make a get a copy of your ID and have that in your own computer files. And when you hit again, when you hit select files to upload, it'll take you right into your own computer into your own files. <clears throat> Pardon me. Any other information that you might have um, and you think would be helpful to include, you can put in the text box. Things that you might want to include would be either maybe a ticket number if you had it or your license plate of your current vehicle. It could be a license plate of a previous vehicle that was registered to you. And then after that, you click submit. Now, the great thing about this is that once you submit your information, just like with the mail-in options, your tickets will be put on hold. So what happens next? Next, you're going to get a call from a staff person from the Bureau of Administrative Adjudication. They're gonna call you to finalize the process. They will identify themselves and let you know who they are and why they're calling. Now, because this is a very popular way to apply, it could take up to three weeks for you to get a phone call. Hopefully it won't be that long. But what you need to remember is you don't have to worry because your tickets will be on hold that whole time. <clears throat> Pardon me again. So the staff person will talk to you about your payment plan options. They'll go over the total amount due. They will um, ask you what you wanna have your down payment be and your start date. Once the call is finished, you will have up to three days to make your down payment. So I would recommend hanging up the phone and making your down payment online. They'll also give you um, your payment plan number. So if you're back on that screen from our homepage, you'll, put, you'll choose the selection payment plan number and you'll enter that number in to make your down payment. So it is important to make the payment within three days because if not, the tickets won't be on hold anymore. They could get late penalties added. And they, if you have three or more tickets, you could be at risk for being booted or towed. Now, if you happen to miss a call, it's okay. The staff person will leave a message and give you a number to call back. But you have to call back within five days or again, those tickets will not be on hold anymore. That's it for online. It's pretty straightforward. I don't know if we have any questions about that before I move on to the in-person. Yeah, I think yeah. one uh, really great point I wanna make, Sue, um, from what I heard you say, so I don't wanna make it and so I wanna, wanna reinforce it, is that as soon as you call in to start that process of a payment plan or start the online process, you actually are then, um, protected, as we call it, right, from getting booted or towed, having to conduct an enforcement action. So that's really great. I mean, your freedom of mind and, and clarity and ease can begin immediately once you start yes. the process. Yes, before you even make your down payment. Absolutely. They will be on hold. But again, just remember, you have 10 days from the date your application is mailed out. 
And then <clears throat> when you're online, you have three days to make your town payment from the time you talk to a staff person. Okay, so next <clears throat> I will cover how to enroll in person. Because of COVID-19 restrictions, the only way to set up a payment plan in person is if your car has been booted or towed. That's really important to remember. So you, you can't go down to 913 Filbert Street and just get on a payment plan unless your vehicle is booted or towed. Now, if you think about the nature of operations that happen with BAA and booting and towing, there's no way to schedule um, these hearings that you're going to need to have in advance because nobody knows from day to day which cars are going to be booted or towed. So that means that there are people who go to 913 Filbert Street on any given day <clears throat> and we don't have a way to schedule them. So the hours at the BAA, they are open, the office is open from 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. And you might say, wait a minute, on your screen, it says 8.30 to 2. Why is that? That is because there has to be a certain time when they stop having those hearings because there are a few more steps after the hearing when you talk to someone that need to be, that you need to go through. So in order to get everybody through, they have to stop the beginning of those hearings at a certain time. On Saturdays, the time is 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So I always recommend to people, if you are going down to get on an in-person payment plan, to get there as <clears throat> early as possible. First thing in the morning, and you should be good to go. Um, and I have also noticed that things do get busier after 12 o'clock. So getting there early is always best. So can I just make sure that I'm clear about those times? So mm -hmm. going to uh, the BAA to, to get a payment plan if you've been booted or towed, um, that the office opens up at 8.30 on Monday, from Monday to Friday. But you're yeah. suggesting that uh, one, that you get there before two, because they may not accept any more people after two o'clock. And also you're suggesting that they get there as early in the morning as possible because uh, it, it just gets really crowded, you know, after nine o'clock or 9.30. So to be as early as possible is great. And then on Saturday, it's 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., correct? That's correct. Right? 9 a.m. to, and do you need to get there earlier than 11 or is 11 o'clock uh, coming at 11 okay? Um, I would try to get there before 11. Again, that's kind of the, the cutoff point that if it's full, if it's a full day, that that's when they would probably stop having hearings. Okay, so the office is open after office 11. Is open until one o'clock. Right, but you need to be there by 11. And the other right. point that I, I think, if you could just expand just a little bit on, if you get into a payment plan after you have been booted or towed, are you able to get the same payment plan options that you went over earlier or there are there different terms? It's slightly different. So if you are booted or towed, you have to um, pay a 50% down payment and you can still pick the um, length. It could be 12 months or 18 months, but you do have a higher down payment. So again, I think if anything that you take away from this tonight is to Get on that payment plan before you get booted or towed because it's going to be less costly for you and you're going to save time, time and money. And aggravation. Yes. Right. So that's a really important point. Say it again, which is to get on a payment plan before you're booted or towed. Because once you're booted or towed, you're going to have to pay a lot more money up front to get your car back. And you got to go through the process of getting your car back, which is a lot more aggravation. Versus, right. yes, when you finish when you finish this session tonight, just hang up the phone. I mean, hang uh, hang up from this uh, our webinar. <clears throat> pick up the phone because it's not eight o'clock yet, and make the phone call to find out how do you get into a payment plan, what your ticket balance is, so that you can initiate the process of having a form mailed to you 
and, and completing completing a um, payment plan. Absolutely. So if people make that phone call tonight, they're going to be protected tonight. That's right. They have a 10 day protection. That's right. <clears throat> so the process does take a bit of time. So if you have to go in person, here's some tips. Um, if your car is towed, plan for the whole process from the time you get to 913 Filbert Street to the time you're picking up your vehicle. It's going to take a few hours. We do have restrictions on the number of people that are allowed in the building at one time, and you may have to spend some time outside, so dress appropriately. Again, knowing your license plate is most helpful. Just like the other two processes, you'll speak to a staff person who will get the information um, <clears throat> that they need to find all of your outstanding tickets. They're going to ask you for your state issued photo ID and your phone number, and they're gonna have a hearing officer call you. <clears throat> it's really important to answer the phone when they call so you don't lose your place. If you don't answer, it's okay. They will call you back one more time, but that's it. After that, you're done. So make sure your ringer's on, make sure you answer your phone. You'll speak to the hearing officer. They'll let you know how much money you owe, what the, you know, they'll talk to them about the terms, the down payment. And then when you make your down payment, if you are using a credit card in person, the name on the credit card must match the name on your ID. So that means you can't go with your ID and your brother's um, credit card. It has to be your own credit card in your own name. Now, if your brother or somebody else wants to come with you, to, then they are gonna make that down payment. They just need to have their ID. So you can have somebody else make that down payment, but they have to be physically present with their own ID. After that, after you make the down payment and fill out the rest of the paperwork, you will be given the address of the impoundment lot where your vehicle is located if you are in fact towed. And if you are booted, a um, notification will be sent to the dispatch crew to take that boot off of your vehicle. Do we have any questions for that? We're good? Okay. So no matter how you enroll, you have four different options to make your monthly payments. Number one is mail. Remember, like we talked about earlier, send your check or money order made out to the city of Philadelphia, no cash please, and send it to this address. If you're online, again, you start at our homepage. There it is and you click the icon that says payment plans and follow the process that we talked about earlier and enter your payment plan number. And when you're online, you can pay by credit or debit card. You can also pay by phone and you can pay 24 seven by our automated line. Now, again, not again, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this is important to know. For phone payments and online payments for your monthly payments, there is a $3.50 convenience fee for online or phone payments. So, and they call it convenience fee because if you forget to mail in your payment, if you forget to go drop off your payment, you can make this payment right away and still be okay, but there is a fee for that. So you can also make payments in person. And if you wanna pay by check, money order, money order, credit or debit card, or cash, you can do it in person at 913 Filbert Street. The hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And these are what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call real hours. There is no, you don't have to get there. You can get there. At, 5.58 on a Monday, 5.58 p.m. and, you know, make your payment, um, 5.59, whatever. You probably get there at six o'clock and still make it, but try to get there at 5.59. Um, but again, for um, health reasons and to allow for social distancing, 
You do have to schedule an appointment time, but it's really easy to do. You just, <laughs> excuse me, type in parking violations branch to the number 267-214-5273, and then you follow the prompts. You could also download the QLESS app, that's Q-L-E-S-S, -S. it's an application for your phone. And once you have that app, you search Philadelphia Parking Violations Branch. And just so you know, we do have health screenings um, for everyone's protection and you have to wear a mask. So some important things to remember. Number one, keep making your payments until the plan is finished. It's really important to know that if your plan gets canceled because of non-payment, the tickets go off of that hold and we don't want that. You don't want that and we don't want that. Once they go off hold, if you have three or more, you could be booted or towed and penalties can always accrue if you don't have already the highest you know, amount of penalties. This doesn't have to do exactly with payment plans, but I just think it's really important to um, have this information out there. You know, we try to be as open and transparent as possible. And um, if you are if you have are driving around in a car right now, and you're thinking, oh, I'm fine because I only have one unpaid ticket. I'm not at risk for being booted or towed. But you had a car two years ago that had three tickets or even two tickets that are still unpaid, your car that you're driving right now is at risk for being towed because it's a, it's you add up all of the tickets that have either have been in your name or in your name right now. So it's, it's something that we wanna make sure that people recognize and realize. And so you know that you can take care of that. Again, see if you can set up automatic payments with your bank or credit union so you don't even have to worry about it. It just gets done every month. And maybe one of the most important things is just remember to do it now. If you have unpaid tickets, do it now. Don't wait until you're booted or towed because it's gonna be more costly and gonna waste, not waste your time. It's gonna take some time to take care of those things. So by doing it now, before you are booted or towed, you can save time and money. And I think we can agree, we all like that. Before you go on, uh, Sue, can I just kind of reinforce another point that you made? You made the comment about how um, other uh, license plates or cars that you may have had with different plates on them are kind of all put together. This is an important point for people to know uh, for their own knowledge and use. If you sell your car to somebody, um, always remember to, to take your license plate off of the car. Because if that person takes, uh, get, gets your the car, which you sold to them fully and rightfully, but they go out and get a bunch of tickets on that plate, that plate's gonna come back to you and you're gonna owe those tickets. So even though somebody else owns the car, you would have been the owner of the plate and you're gonna owe their tickets. And we hear so many sad stories about people, you know, how they let somebody borrow their car, they got a lot of tickets for them, or they sold the car and the person took the plate and put it on, a, uh, put, took the plate, put it on another vehicle and it causes a big problem. So if you have a license plate on a car that you're selling, take that, uh, take that plate off and keep your own plate. If it goes onto another car, it's going to be a big problem. I have another question too. Um, the question is: Is there a statute of limitations? Um, and then, are there? Uh, I'll ask that question first. I'll let you answer that first, and then there's more to it. Uh, a statute of limitations for um, being held responsible for parking tickets. I'm assuming that's the question. <clears throat> no, there is not. Okay. Uh, then the second question is, are the payment plans established for full uh, life history or amount of tickets? I got a, a little bit of feedback with that. Do you mind repeating that? Sure. I think the person is asking, 
can you set up a payment plan for all the tickets that you've ever gotten uh, over time? This yeah for their for their live stream. Can you set up a payment plan, or is there a certain a set amount of tickets that you can have in the uh, in the payment plan? So you know, unfortunately, folks, I will tell you, we've had people who've had uh, you know 50, 60 tickets. Honest engine, it's very sad when we see that. Um, if you have 50, 60 tickets, you can get 50, 60 tickets in a payment plan. If you have one ticket, you can put it in a payment plan as long as that one ticket is over $115. So, so if you could kind of explain more about that, I think that's the question that's being asked. Yeah, that, that's correct. It, there, there's no limit on, um, you know, how many tickets can be entered and enrolled in a payment plan. Um, if, if you have them, you can put them on a payment plan. You know, the only thing that I will say is obviously the more tickets you have, even at 15%, that number for the down payment is going to is going to be pretty high. So as long as you can make that down payment, um, then you can enroll as many tickets as as you like to in a payment plan. Um, and for the minimum amount of 115, yes, again, it doesn't. There's no um, uh, minimum amount of tickets. It could be one ticket that has grown to be over $115 and you can enroll that one ticket into a payment plan. Can you tell us, yes, as, as a way of example, which types of tickets may be over $115? Sure. So, I, I mean, just so you know, like the, the basic, um, let's say a, this one isn't, but I'm just going to give you an example, like a, a meter expired ticket in Center City is $36. If you add two penalties to that, a $30 penalty and a $35 penalty, now we're talking about $101. <clears throat> so if you have two of those, or if, even if you have maybe one parking ticket that has two penalties added, and then you get a second parking ticket, now you're at 101 plus 36, 137. But for one ticket, a red light camera violation is $100. Again, if you don't pay it or contest it within 30 days, a $20 penalty is added. So now you have, with just one ticket, you have a balance of $120. So you could enroll that one ticket in a payment plan. Great, great, great. We got some more questions for you. Okay. Someone else writes that they satisfied a past payment plan. And they are now being told that they are still on the booty list after one ticket. So after going to PPA, they were notified the tickets was from the, the ticket was 1992, um, and that was so that was some time ago. So how does a person resolve that? Well, they say they I, they they had a payment plan, and they resolved it. But I, I guess it is that one ticket was not on that list of um, on the payment. List. Okay. Well, number one, I, I think it's probably something where we'll, ha we'll have to reach out to you um, separately because one one ticket on a vehicle from 1992 is not going to have you um, be boot eligible. So you have to have at least one ticket on the car that you're driving now, plus two more in some capacity. So I'd probably need more information. Um, right. to answer that question, but it's a good point because I'm actually just going to flip through this a second. And, and that isn't a car that you're driving now. Isn't it just having a uh, one ticket that's been in the last few years? You, well, you have, to, it, you have to have one ticket on the car that is going to be booted plus anything else. It could be more tickets on that car or it could be more tickets on previous cars. But right. so that's why I'm wondering, like one ticket from 1992, um, even if it's on the same, even if you're still driving that car from 1992, that's not gonna make you eligible to be booted. That's correct. And, and also the amnesty program. So we had an amnesty program for the older tickets, but that program is now over. So uh, amnesty is not available on them uh, right now. Right. And so there's, there's some discussion about older tickets, but right now a ticket that is from 
that is an older ticket is still uh, still due to be paid. Yeah, right? and, and I and I will say they're not eligible though for a boot. Just if you have just that one ticket, correct? Correct. Yep, absolutely. So um, I would encourage anyone who is you know with us here tonight to go to our um, contact us with our e our email address that we have on the screen right now which is engagepa at philippark.org. Um, we'd be happy to help you out and to you know, get to the bottom of any of your questions. If we need a little bit more you know, conversation back and forth, we'd be happy to do that. Um, we also, we can always be reached at any of those social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at philipparking is our handle. Um, so yeah, we're we're always happy to do it. We do it every day. We you know look in our database and try to get to the bottom of things for people and try to help them out. It's, it's what we do. It's what we're here for, and it's what we're happy to do. And just in case there's anybody who, who maybe didn't catch that dialogue that we had about the number of tickets, we talked about this in a, in a prior um, town hall meeting in detail. But could you just just say another minute or repeat our minute of discussion about how many tickets it takes in order to be boot eligible? For sure. Um, three or more. So anything after three. And again, that's a combination of parking tickets, red light camera, and speed camera violations. So we just had speed cameras installed along the boulevard in August. Um, and you can get more than one speed camera violation in a night. If you were zooming down the boulevard and you pass through one intersection where there's a camera and you keep on zooming until another intersection, you could get two tickets in the same evening. So if you have two of those and you got a parking ticket during the day, um, it's not going to be automatic because, um, the I, I want to say more like kind of technical term as we say three or more delinquent tickets which means you have passed the time um to pay them and all of the um penalties have been added so it's not just um i got three parking tickets they have to be what we call delinquent so all the penalties the first two penalties have been added then it's delinquent then if you have three or more you could be booted right very good point. So uh, another good point that you're raising is you heard um, Sue mention, you know, that the penalties when they are added, they're pretty hefty. So you, you really want to get up uh, to pay a ticket, uh, you know, within before penalties start getting added, because it just it, it, it increases the charges to you in a big way. So please. You Nothing else, just get on a payment plan and meet with your tickets are over $115. Or if not, you know, if I got a ticket tomorrow and I didn't have the, the $36 to pay for that ticket tomorrow, well, I'm going to send $15 right now on, on that ticket. And then within a few days, I'm going to get the other six, the other money to pay it off before the penalty start. So even if you don't can't get into a formal payment plan, in effect, you make your own payment plan by at least paying something, but pay off those tickets as soon as you can before the penalties get involved. And then also don't let the tickets pile up without a payment plan because getting booted, as you heard, you're gonna put a lot more money, you're gonna be required to put a lot more money down in order to get your car back. And that's no fun, nobody wants that. No, and, and that is a good point about, um, I've, I've recommended that to people also, because, um, you know, on your, let's just say again, if we're talking about parking tickets, um, expired meter ticket, you get it's $36. May not have $36 all at once to pay that. And it says on the ticket, you have to pay it within 15 days. But what happens is after those 15 days, it, an actual first notice goes out. And when you get that first notice, then you have 10 days after that before a first penalty is added. So really you have 25 days. So don't, you know, if you think of it, like instead of thinking of, of it as, oh, I have this $36 right now to pay within 15 days, 
you do have a little bit longer. So send in, you know, money, $15 or $10. And then after two more weeks, if you can send the other, now, you know, me with math 36 minus, 36 minus 10. Yeah. Send in the other $16. Um, and, and that's a good way because really, like Ms. Tolson mentioned, the, the penalties, they're, they are hefty. They end up being more than the ticket in a lot of times. So if you can avoid that in any way, it really, really, really is to your benefit to do so. Right. And you just shared good information, which is why it's really important to attend these virtual town hall meetings because you shared the insider oh, information. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Insider information about how the ticketing and the fees actually work. Because we want to help you. We want you to take advantage of the services that we offer uh, as a, a public engagement group, but also that the, the authority offers to people. The authority is here to support the businesses and the commerce within the city of Philadelphia. And we have a responsibility. It's not always a pleasant thing, and we understand that, but we're just doing our jobs. But we want to help you in the process. So I just wanted to do a, a little shout out. I know we, we have um, our next town hall will be February 4th. So please come back and join us again. And um, at the end of this webinar, you will um, have an opportunity to take a really short survey. You can fill that out. We've gotten some really great feedback from our previous town halls. Um, it's important for us to know what you think and what will be most helpful for you for us to talk about again in the future or any questions that you might have, how we did, let us know if it was helpful. We really, really, really would appreciate you letting us know. Great. Thank you, Sue. That was wonderful. I hope that all of our attendees this evening have walked away with some uh, helpful information. Uh, one, you know, don't ignore the parking tickets. Get into a payment plan as soon as possible either a formal payment plan or make your own, if you know, just sending something in to try to um, take care of your tickets before they pile up, if you're not at the minimum amount for the formal payment plan. Uh, remember, don't ever give away your license plate to somebody so they can use it on another vehicle because you're gonna be held responsible for it. And if you get into a payment plan, just stick with it and stay with it. You'll have peace of mind and then we'll be out of your hair uh, in terms of you having to worry about uh, the parking authority and any enforcement action. But please, if you have any further questions, contact us at engagepPA at philippark.org. We will okay. gladly be there with you uh, to uh, answer your questions and kind of quarterback your issues uh, through the, the maze of government. We know sometimes it is very difficult. But we thank you for being with us this evening. I think I've all of our questions, there's no more that are on the docket. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of the evening. And Happy Thanks, New everyone. Year. Happy New Year. Yes.